Now, I'm going to be showing you how to tie a March Brown Spider, but basically what we've got here is a March Brown Spider, slightly different, there's slight variants. This is a grey version for a grey day. It's always worth having a grey version for a grey day, as well as a standard one, or one like this, for when the, the bright conditions. Uh, I mean, I, I tie a good half a dozen or more, everything, just to, to have them in my box. Uh, especially uh, this time of the year in March, so it's quite simple. Spider patterns are really good to use and great fun to tie. Now it's a big fly, as you can see, as I'm tying a size 12. This is a Camasan, a B170. Now the, the yellow one, the bright one, I'm going to use a yellow thread, 8 This is the uni. Just start at the eye, which is what we're way down. I'll lay a thread on along the shank. Stop it just short of the barb and then remove the waste piece. Now in both flies I'm going to be using the Cote de Leon. This is white and Cote de Leon. It's a great fly but it lasts a long while. Uh, it's great for tails. Now a good half a dozen fibres, bring them 90 degrees from the stem. Yeah, when they're lined up, tear them away. Tail length, you're looking at least the, the hook length is ideal. Catch it on the top. Now, um, two turns on the bare hook. Now, basically lift, bring the thread underneath the tail fibres and then pull it towards the eye and separate the fibres. When you're happy, you separate it nice and then you can lock them in with a turn. Now, the body is two thirds of the shank. Trim that away. Now, I'm just going to quickly take the thread up. Securing in these ends and then coming back down. Now the dubbing I'm using for the the bright the it's a yellow version is this one here. This is a it's called red brown. It's a spectrumized dubbing or spectrumized fur. Uh, it's a great blend if you can get it, but if you can't, just use a nice warm yellow or so. It's ideal for the March brown. Now the original March brown is here zero. And the, the thread is used to sort of warm up, but this I'm using the dubbing in this case. The rabbit's really easy to dub. Just slide up, dub onto your thread, get a turn, then use that as the anchor point because then what you can do is tighten onto that and then wind up forming a nice shape in the body. And you, work your way up. And you can see, I don't know if you can quite see there, but there's lots of colours there to I'm blended together to get this. This colour, and this is why I like it. It's twisting the light to suit. Now I'm just going to roll back the fibres. It's very nymph like material. It's good for the dun coming off, especially. I'm just going to trim away the excess here. Now I'm going to use a, a dyed yellow passage feather. Now, I don't have many left because I've been using it that many, but these are the small feathers at the bottom. Right, let's take one out and then remove the fluff from the bottom. Now you could use the natural brown if you haven't got these. Just going to grab the tip of the hackle, tie it in by the tip, get as much of the hackle as you can. I want the best part of the hackle is towards the bottom, the best marked fibres are at the tip, towards the tip. So, catch that in. Uh, you can fold back the tip nice and tight, there it's there. And we can trim it away, just keep a hold of the main hackle, trim that away. Now to support that I'm going to use a natural brown, it's just a Chinese cock hackle. And just one of the smaller feathers. Now you don't get met, I mean these are no, you can't overdress the fly with these feathers. Now I've used them for years so. Now both feathers, I've got the underside facing myself and towards the eye of the hook. Now you got to wax on your thread. And I'm going to work my way down. There's a waste piece, just trim that away. What a nice surface, a 
to wind the hackle on. You don't want any lumps and bumps. You wind the main hackle, or the cock hackle, which is going to support and float the fly. So I'm going to have a good turn at the beginning. And then to choose the hackle up, I have to use it all to get the best of the hackle. Cross your thread. Now what I'm going to do here is just wind two or three turns up into the hackle. Just watch the tap there. And then come back down. We can break it off because that's it tied in nice and tight. And then we can wind this hackle through the tip of the hackle. And then try and get it to face towards the eye of the hook. Sometimes I'll not do it, but don't worry. These the, st the stiff fibres of the cock hackle are going to basically hold and support the partridge as we wind down to the eye. Now at this point, just anything going forward that I just draw it back, come up with the thread, a couple of turns, secure. Trim that away. Anything going forward, we can hold back with the thread turn. Now if they're too small or too short and stuff, we can actually trim them away. Tidy these up. Tidy the head area up. And then we can put finish. Now what I like to do, I'm just going to draw back these fibres out of the way. And then get some varnish. Put it onto our thread. One, two, three, four. Tighten up, trim away your thread. And then we go. Then we can obviously wind in the partridge hackle through the cock hackle. You have to work your way around, open the fibres out. You can see how it sits. And that there's a good version of the March Brown. It will represent some of the olives coming off as well. It's a good pattern. Uh, I hope you enjoyed that.